Welcome to Around the Writer's Table, a podcast focusing on the crossroads of creativity, craft, and conscious living for writers of all ages and backgrounds. Your hosts are Gina, Melody, and Kim Boo, three close friends and women of a certain age who bring to the table their eclectic backgrounds and unique perspectives on the trials, tribulations, and the joys of writing. So pull up a chair and get comfortable here around the writer's table. Welcome back, listeners, to Around the Writer's Table. This is Kimbu York. We are starting episode 38, getting back into the creativity quest with Gina Hogan Edwards. And also, of course, I'm here with Melody A. Scout. I am, just in case you don't know, I am a romance novelist and former project manager who helps writers and solopreneurs find time and motivation to create. I also run the One Million Words uh, membership community for writers for accountability and productivity, which is kind of new. And I'm really excited about how that's shaping up. So you'll probably hear me talking about that again. But good morning, Miss Melody. Tell me what, who, who are you again and why are you here? <laughs> I know you've been busy a lot lately. You've had a lot going on with spring, right? Oh, yeah. Um, hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast. My name is Melody a Scout, and yes, I am a landscape designer and all around plant person. And this is the very busy time of year for me. Mm-hmm. So that's been going on with me. And I help my clients find their sense of home by restoring balance and harmony to their lives through plant spirit medicine and my book, Soul of the Seasons. We have those links on our website where you can either order the book or check out my blogs. And I'm also, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a landscape designer and I love anything to do with plants. So welcome. And you really do. Like she's the plant person. I'm I'm the plant murderer, but that's, you know, <laughs> everybody has to have their role in the great circle of life. Speaking of Gina, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, ladies. Good morning, listeners. It's wonderful to be here. And um, there's also something that Melody and I share in common, which is that we are both working on historical fiction novels. Oh, yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, I'm a writer. I uh, support women in finding their voices, getting their stories out. I I facilitate writing retreats on the beautiful island of St. George in the Gulf of Mexico. Got one of those coming up in May. Mm. Um, I have a Facebook group called Women Writing for Change. And that's four years old now. It just, we just went through that anniversary, didn't we? We Just had our birthday and hit 500 members, which blows my mind. That blows my mind too, man. I I can't (laughs) get over that. You're doing such a great job with it. So I want to encourage our listeners to Click on that. Click on that Facebook link, and we'll have it on the around the writers table uh, link as well, because it's a great um, tool. We have creative writing sessions scheduled mm-hmm. yep. every mm-hmm. week, and it's a great accountability tool yeah. to get you into the writing groove. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it's a great community, Gina. You've done a done. Thank a you, ladies. Building that yes. up. It's been a real inspiration for me as I work on the One Million Words Club. So thank you there too. But it looks like we are back around to the creativity quest. And I know that we were talking about this as three feet from gold, which when the first time you said that to me a long time ago now, but first time you said it, you had to explain it to me because I was just like, what, what does that even mean? So I know you're going to back up a little bit and go over Mm -hmm. the creativity quest for listeners who are not familiar with it yet. But I, I, for one, am really looking forward to hearing more what you have to say about three feet from gold. So it's uh, take, take us there, Miss Gina, take us away. The Creativity Quest is a model that I created based on my own experience as a writer and based on the writers that I have worked with over the years as an editor and a creativity coach and kind of how we experience the process of creativity and the creative journey. So I just wanted to recap, especially for new listeners, the stages of that quest that we have already talked about on our podcast and reference the podcast episode. So you can go back and listen to those if you haven't already. We started out with an introduction to the quest, kind of an overview back in episode 18. 
and then we dove into what I'm going to call the first stage. But as I emphasize in every episode, when we talk about this, <laughs> this journey is not linear. It is not sequential. It is not cyclical. It is a reiterative process. We may skip stages. You as a creative may not experience them in exactly the order that I talk about them in, uh, but it is a model for looking at the way that we experience the process and the different alternatives for where we, we may jump from one stage to the other. So the first stage, and you'll see that each of these stages, the first letter spells out the word creativity. So C is carrying inner disquiet. We talked about that in episode 19. And then we went into R, releasing, which we started in that episode, not only about talking about the stage and what that stage means, but we did a second episode, which we relate to Melody's book, Soul of the Seasons, and how we experience the seasons of our lives, the seasons of the process of writing in relationship to this model. And so there were two episodes on releasing 20 and 21. And that is all about releasing the resistance and the barriers that hold us back. E is emulating and mirroring. That's a muscle, uh, muscle building stage where we are looking to our mentors. We talked about that in episodes 22 and 23. And then we did an episode, I think it was summertime, and we did a bonus episode on something in 24. But in 25 and 26, we talked about assessing and acknowledging, which is looking at where we are, what we've learned, what we still have to learn, what's still ahead for us. And then we went to T, which is the first T, obviously, uh, called taking ownership, which is all about um, inviting in the um, divergence from our mentors and greater mastery. We talked about that in episodes 27 and 28. Then we were at I, which is inviting authentic existence, which is opening up to all of the, the new world that we've created with this uh, living the life as a creative person uh, and an acceptance of all of the consequences of really living into our authentic existence. We talked about that first in episode 29. And then again, we had a little bump with some bonus episodes in there and we skipped to 32 and 33. So inviting authentic existence was episodes 29, 32, and 33. And then V is verifying and testing. That's where we're testing our skills, testing our supporters, our allegiances, our allies. We talked about that in episodes 34 and 35. And then our the most recent stage that we talked about is integrating and dedicating. Uh, we talked about that in episodes 36 and 37, and that's all about um, wearing the creative identity, all about really living into fully uh, taking off the masks, integrating the creative part of our lives into our day-to-day -day existence. That brings us, ladies, to <laughs> today's topic, which is three feet from gold. I am also calling this uh, trusting the process uh, for RT, and you'll understand why as I talk a little bit about what the three feet from gold story is about and how we sort of live into that. Mm. So the this stage is inspired by um, the story that Napoleon Hill is credited with. And I'm sure that there are plenty of other people who have talked about this story, mm -hmm. but um, I, I'm going to kind of paraphrase to you the way that, that he told the story. So there's always this idea wherever we are in the journey that we can keep plugging away, that we can keep moving on, or we can give up. And so this story of Three Feet from Gold kind of exemplifies that. So there was this dude named R.U. Darby, and his uncle was really caught up in the gold fever and the gold rush days. And so he decided that he was going to go west and he was going to dig himself a, a, a um, vein of gold and he was going to get rich, right? So he went out west. He spent weeks and weeks of finding the land, staking a claim, 
and going to work with a pick and a shovel, you know, really doing the hard work. But his lust for the gold, if you will, was uh, greater than his resistance to doing the hard work. So weeks and weeks of labor, he finally found this vein of gold. But he discovered that he was not going to be able to use the pick and shovel, that he was going to need some machinery to be able to get that ore to the surface. And so he covered up his mine so nobody else would find it. And he went back to Maryland, told his relatives about the challenge that he was facing, asked them and his neighbors for some help because he had struck gold, but he needed their help to get to the next step. And so they all got together the money that he needed for the machinery. They got the machinery out there. And so Darby and his uncle went to work on this mine again. They mined the first car. They shipped it to the smelter. Um, they realized that they had found one of the richest mines in Colorado. They did a few more cars of the ore and were able to get completely out of debt, pay off their family and their friends, this machinery that they had helped them um, uh, purchase in order to mine this ore. And they just knew that they were going to make a killing, right? And so the drills went down and they kept mining the ore. They kept filling the cars. And then all of a sudden, the vein disappeared. They couldn't find any more gold. They, they felt like they'd come to the end of the pot of gold. You know, it was no longer there. They kept drilling, just trying to pick up that vein again. They did weeks and weeks and weeks of that and had no success. And so they finally decided to quit. So they sold this piece of machinery to a junk man, okay? Sold it for a few hundred dollars. They'd already, you know, paid off the debt. So it was just a matter of no more riches took the train back home to Maryland. Okay, now that junk man was not a dumb junk man. He called in a mining engineer. He knew where that uh, mining cave was that they had been digging. So he called in a mining engineer to look at that mine and to do some calculating. And that engineer told him that even though Darby and his uncle thought the project had failed, they had been unfamiliar with what are called fault lines. And so his calculations showed that the vein of gold could be found only three feet from where they had stopped drilling. So the junk man jumped into action, and that is exactly where he found the vein of gold. And he ended up with millions of dollars in ore. And so... Darby and his uncle, of course, realized that they gave up the ghost too quickly. And so when I call this stage three feet from gold, this exemplifies the toughest stage when we face the most challenges ever. And we have to make that decision. Are we going to keep at this creative journey? Are we going to keep plugging away at being a creative person? Or are we going to walk away? Now, I use the words plugging away. There's, there's a masculine and a feminine approach to this stage. <laughs> and the masculine one is the one we hear terms like keep plugging away. Winners never quit and quitters never win. And that sets up this winner-loser opposition, right? Very so zero-sum game, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and I so I prefer, and I'm renaming the stage, this is the official renaming of this stage, to trusting the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also gives us the T in creativity, that second T, but it is a, I think, uh, a less, like you said, there's no zero-sum game here. It is leaning in, to this choice that we have of continuing on this creative journey. 
And that's a tough one. I hear a lot of authors talking, especially these days. This, as we record this, this is March 2024, and 2023 was a rough year for a lot of professional authors. And so, actually, I've talked to a lot of them are facing that right now because they didn't make a lot of money. Some of them are having to face going back to day jobs or relying on their spouses to pay the bills. And so, there, there's a lot of talk. Is it worth it? Is it, why are you really mm -hmm. in the game? Like, are you in the game to make? A lot of gold are you in the game to tell the stories are you in the game to what why are you here and so this is very timely at least for a lot of the chatter that i'm hearing out there in the uh, professional author writer community i think a lot of writers uh the the one of the positive things that came out of covid was that it gave a lot of creative people time to create mm -hmm. and mm -hmm when we started getting back to uh, it, you know, you can't really say getting back to our normal, you can't say getting back to our old world, but when COVID <laughs> ended that, even though it's not over either, yeah, the lockdown uh, ended, let's say what I say. <laughs> and we had to go back to some sense of uh, normality or whatever you want to call it that authors did face that decision okay they may have invested two full years into writing full time because they could um and they couldn't go back to their regular jobs and and then in 2023 we're faced with do i go back to that do i keep up this momentum that i've created so it has been 2023 was definitely a hard year for a lot of writers yeah, yeah that's what i'm hearing i'd love to know um if you all have examples in your own life or or maybe the clients that you've worked with um, in your capacity of of supporting writers and creative people if there are some examples that you can give us of a time when you either witnessed or experienced yourself being three feet from gold and how so three qualities that i feel like writers really need in this stage are trust of course and then resilience and persistence. Mm. And so you can kind of think of it in terms of when you had to call on those characteristics and how that went for you. Melody, what about you? As you were talking, I was thinking of not only two different examples, but two different ways that I could look at my experiences uh, being three feet from gold, what the actual gold was. Um, the first one, of course, is my book, Soul of the Seasons. Uh, it was a very long, challenging process. The subject material was deep. Um, it worked me as I worked it. I remember coming down to the final uh, revision suggestions that uh, Gina sent back to me as my editor. And then I had some in my head, some... Um, unkind thoughts and said some bad words in my head about all of Gina's suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> Crap! I gotta do the, true, the true experience uh, of being edited, yeah. Yes. Um, and, you know, as she, you know, she's got great wisdom. So take a break, come back to it, go in, get it done, get out, don't mm -hmm. overthink it, just mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Um, that was really helpful. It wasn't nearly as challenging as I had imagined it to be and helped me push through that last, uh, it, it was, you know, many times I thought during the process, really, really, I'm going to do more now, seriously. But I am so glad I did that because it came, it was a better product. I felt happier about the work. It helped her encouragement and my sense of duty and uh, her engaging me in accountability helped push me through and complete that. Now, when I first started my um, writing in, in earnest back in probably 2000, I was starting another novel loosely based on uh, my own personal history. It was semi-autobiographical. I got 350 pages into it. My writing group was kind and helpful. And But I sent 
like the first chapter off to another friend of mine who was a writer and she came back with the uh critique that it's too depressing oh wow okay which was hard to hear but as i took a moment i realized she was right Mm. about it Mm -hmm. and that i never had a clear ending point for this story Mm -hmm. uh but the gold that and so i never finished it but the gold that i harvested out of it was my writing improved Mm. i got some real clarity about like yeah, this is not really a subject I want to take any further, at least not right now. But I really uh, gained a lot of valuable experience and wisdom in the writing process by doing it. So I kept a hard copy of it just to remind me Mm. of that. Mm. Good. Awesome. Yeah, good. Definitely. Terrific. Mm -hmm. So you raise a wonderful point in using the book writing process. Um, When I talk about three feet from gold and trusting the process, it's easy to jump first to the conclusion of, do I continue this or do I stop? Do I keep being a writer or do I go back to a day job and do something else? So that's the most dramatic example of this stage. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that a lot like the early stage of releasing, this is one of those stages that keeps coming up again and again and again Mm -hmm. as we go through various um, phases of our creative existence. And it sort of overlays everything else because you can it is necessary for us to trust the process, even if we're just um, moving from one project to another and trusting that that next project is what we should be focusing on. Well, and I also think that, that, that Melody brings up a really good point is that there's gold isn't just gold, like gold is Mm -hmm. the experience, like, you know, trusting the process of writing something, even if it never does get published, trusting the process of what you're going through as part of the process, not necessarily as how much money is in the bank. So uh, I thought, Melody, that was a really good example of it, because you were trusting the process and learned from it. And you took gold out of it, even though you never went further with that particular project. So that was, that was a good insight for me to have. Thank you for pointing that out because, again, the name change from three feet from goal to trusting the process sort mm-hmm. of represents that emphasis on the feminine that, that it isn't about, I do not believe that the writing process, that the uh, existence of being a writer is about creating some end product. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, we want to finish a book or finish whatever it is that we're working on as our writing project and have that tangible result. But embracing the process is mandatory in order for us to ever even get to that stage of having a finished product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But put the emphasis on the product robs the richness of the experience yes yes absolutely i agree with that so much so kimbu what about you what kind of um experience have you had of being three feet from gold or (laughs) Or trusting the process or mining some (laughs) nugget (laughs) ah i i think mine is more an example of how this is something that happens repeatedly throughout your career i uh, a while back on my blog the scriptorium i actually posted about i think the three the three times i quit writing and yes <laughs> yes and, and perfect and, example yes and, and a lot of it was because i in those instances it's just getting back to it it was because i wasn't doing what melody was doing and i was looking at the end product as the goal rather than as the experiences of writing the stories and telling the stories that I want to write. So for me, come three feet from gold has been, you know, trusting the process, however we want to define that has been coming around to finding the, finding the real reason I'm in it. <laughs> My goal mm. is storytelling and 
whether mm-hmm. I, and yes, I would like to make money doing that. I would like to, you know, do that full time and and do that. The goal is and always has been whether I admit it or not or acknowledge it or not or trust it or not to tell the stories that I want to tell. And so I get mm-hmm. I've gotten wrapped up in like, you know, genre hunting and niching down and rapid release and the subscriptions and all these things about making money. And I have to remember that the whole point of that, the whole point of any of it for me, for my gold is to tell the stories that are like burbling up in my heart and my hump in my mind. That's kind of my experience with, with trusting the process is a con- mm-hmm. constant reiteration of it is me remembering why the hell I'm doing this in the first place. Okay. You know, my goal is storytelling. That's I've stopped plenty of times mm. not telling the stories because of other things or lacking fake confidence in myself or lacking, you know, thinking that no one will ever buy the book. Like that's not, that's important, but it's not why I'm in it. So I feel like I'm rambling. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and no, you're not, you're not rambling at all. Well, and the other part I wanted to bring in about this was stopping or what seems like stopping the process really isn't stopping necessarily three feet from gold. Sometimes you just need to take a break. Mm-hmm. Three feet from gold so you can get back to mining for more than three, the next or three feet because you just don't have energy. <laughs> well, yes. And Kimbo, you described on a previous podcast how you did that because you had to rethink a whole mm. storyline and changed the main character and who she was. Yeah. And then you could move right. forward Good point. with that story. Your uh, discussion of storytelling and your why, I'm going to put a big <laughs> footnote on that because in our next episode... Oh. <laughs> We're going to be talking a little bit more with Melody about the the seasons of writing and how that relates to this particular stage. And um, so one of the things that I'm going to add to that conversation has to do with what you're talking about, the why. Um, one example that I wanted to share with you about Three Feet from Gold before we wrap up here. This is a heartbreaker for me because this happened to a person that I love very much. And she unfortunately is no longer with us. She passed away a couple of years ago, but she was a brilliant writer, extremely creative, uh, could write sort of like fantasy, um, you know, I don't want to say monsters, but, uh, unusual characters, things that I could never possibly imagine. And she went to a number of conferences and retreats and worked on several different books over the years. And she had drafted a book and went to a conference and had the opportunity to pitch it to some agents. You know, some conferences you, you can pay extra to do that, or sometimes it's even included, but she had, she pitched it to an agent. The agent loved it and was willing to take her on if she would rewrite this one section. She spent years theoretically rewriting that one section and never resubmitted. Oh to no, the what the heck? And oh, I mean, those of us who were her friends and supporters were just heartbroken to see how she could not get out of that. She couldn't trust the process enough to follow through, and she was fearful, obviously. and she effectively gave up by just spinning her wheels. And so that is the most dramatic uh, example of three feet from goal to me. Um, And, you know, I don't want to end our (laughs) podcast on that sad note, but um, (laughs) that that's the most um, top of mind example for me. And as I mentioned earlier in our next episode, we're going to be talking more about this stage in relation to Uh, the seasons of the writing with Melody. And so just want to remind you all that we will have a worksheet on our website around the writers table.com that we have a place there where you can comment on the episode. You can also listen to these episodes on Apple, 
Google Play. Where else, Kim Boo? Yeah, You're a we're, tech well, person. We're, we're everywhere. We're on all the major um, podcast distributors, including, as you said, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, uh, Google Podcasts anymore, YouTube. We do put the episodes up on YouTube. Um, yes, YouTube. Yeah, right? I knew I was forgetting <laughs> it's a that newer one. one. But um, but wherever you wherever you listen to podcasts, you should be able to to catch ours. And uh, yes, we will have links. We will have the worksheets. We do have, we do uh, get posting to transcripts. Um, so please visit our site. We do have that uh, contact form there where people can submit their own questions or comments. We'd love to hear from you. But uh, I'm looking forward to the next episode, Gina. I, I, and just, you know, quick wrap up on uh, that's a little depressing story about your friend, but I think that's a warning sign. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's what we risk yeah. by not trusting the process and, and, and stopping completely the, rather than just taking a rest, rest. So I think it's important for our, mm -hmm. our listeners to hear the good and the bad sometimes. And, and that's definitely a situation that didn't go right for that particular author. And I'm sorry to hear it too, but we'll be talking right. about that with the next episode, which will be episode 39. And uh, Melody, you will be telling mm -hmm. us more about Soul of the Seasons and the Five Seasons Plant Spirit Medicine as it relates to the Creativity Quest. So personally, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, so... That's it for this time, y'all. Thank you so much. We survived technical Absolutely. difficulties and strange noises yeah. outside and barking dogs and I don't know what else, but we did it. And down trees. <laughs> yeah, down trees. Mm -hmm. it, it, for listeners, just so you know, Gina's got a lot oh my of work going on at her house. So, yes, I heard. <laughs> yeah. uh, yep, yep. Thank you so much. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us around the writer's table. Please feel free to suggest a topic or a guest by emailing info at aroundtheriderstable.com. Music provided with gracious permission by Langtree. A link to their music is on our homepage at aroundtheriderstable.com. Everyone here around the writer's table wishes you joy in your writing and everyday grace in your living. Take care until next time.